Here's a why. This is why this is going to be harder. Or more involved. I shouldn't say harder. It's more involved. There's why in two different places. You know how when you were solving equations where the variable you were looking for was in two different places, there was more steps involved in grade 8? It isn't harder. It's just more steps involved. You're going to start exactly the same way. The concept is we can get at what the derivative is if we, if we, if we differentiate both sides here. x squared minus xy plus y equals that. You are going to find the derivative of both sides. Differentiate both sides, which is d dx of this side has to be equal to d dx of that side. Okay? And probably I should put brackets when I do that because you're finding the derivative of that whole thing. I, I think probably it's better if you write... You could say this. You could say d dx of x squared if it made you feel better. You could say minus d dx of this plus d dx of this equals... I'm going to still put this down here because where are going to be the parts that are going to make you not cry, but realize there's a lot of steps involved? What do you do with the xy? Good question. What is this? This is a product, so you need to use the product rule, right? This is a chain of things because you got y squared to y and y to x. You're going to have to use the chain rule. This is just x squared compared to x. That's easier, right? So you uh, do what you need to do there. You're probably going to need more space, Hor like horizontally more space. So I'm going to put this out here. This is 2x. I'm going to put a big set of brackets here because there's going to be several things. Product rule of x, y. I need, I need x prime y plus x, y prime, right? I'm going to write that up here if it is if it actually helps you. x prime y plus x, y prime. What is that equal to? x prime here is just, what's the derivative of x with respect to x? 1, right? 1 times y plus x times y prime is just, I'm using this notation so I should stick to that. You can use the y prime notation if you find that easier. I have used the dy dx notation, but you can stick to y prime as long as you use that all the way through. Why is that x prime? I, I, I did that. You could put d dx of x times y, but I think probably some people like the prime notation better for this. You, you could have done that below it just it's hard to do the prime notation we get x y like you could do x y prime the whole thing but that's not really the usual thing to do this this could be easily in a different color just to say it's something different okay that's just saying this is what the derivative of this is uh, now the rest of it here is plus 2y times dy over dx because it's y squared compared to y and then y compared to x because that's a chain. Because this is not in the same variable that you're comparing it to. That's the other advantage of using the dy or the ddx notation. I, I would... Once you get to know how to do this, I wouldn't start. I wouldn't write this here. I just wrote that to remind you of what the product rule was. When you have x y, it's x prime y, x y prime. The other side of this is zero. We need to isolate. We need to isolate this. It's in more than one place. What you need to do is collect all the terms, just like you did in grade eight. If what you're solving for is in more than one place. You have to collect all those terms on one side of the equation and collect everything else on the other side. I suggest you simplify first. 
2x minus y minus x times dy dx plus 2y dy dx equals 0. Now, unfortunately, I can't chop this apart because it's one whole page. So I'm going to have to continue down below here. Yeah, I should I should in the future put it as two halves, but didn't do didn't do that this time. That expand thing, but this is this is a page that I printed in here, so it's not going to expand that. Okay. You now I realize this is all good discussion, but uh, you can you can use your lasso tool to move these two things to the other side, or for those of you unfortunate enough to not have a lasso tool, you can do the old-fashioned thing, which is not right on top of the other question here. So what we're going to do is do this. We're going to say, this is not here right now, right? Okay? For now, just don't worry, don't worry. It's okay. We're still going to do that one. Don't you cross it out. Okay? I'm moving these two to the other side. I'm showing you a grade 8 skill here. So you don't feel that it's difficult, right? The ones that don't have dy dx in it. We're isolating the terms that have... You know, in grade 8, you probably highlighted terms or drew a big box around them or something. Like the like the like terms. And then the other terms, you drew something else around. I, I don't know why I'm doing this. But on the other side, you need to put those two terms. Negative 2x plus y. Then you didn't realize what you were doing in grade 8, but you could have been taught to factor out dy dx. dy dx, you factor it out, minus x plus 2y. You know how when you, you know how when you had 3x minus 5x equals 7, and you changed it to negative 2x? Really what you could have done, if you're to, uh, you lack the intelligence to know right off the top of your head what 3 minus 5 was, you could have said, I don't know what 3 minus 5 is, but I'll figure that out later. But whatever it is, it's that times x. Really, you could look at it as factoring it out, right? 3x minus 5x is like 3 minus 5 times x. And then you could have said it's 7 minus 3 divided by 3 minus 5. You could have done that, but you didn't because that would make you cry in grade 8. It's not going to make you cry now, hopefully. Then to solve this, you have dy dx equals negative 2x plus y over negative x plus 2y. That is, a, that is a derivative. If you want, if you really felt like it, you could go back and substitute in, actually you can't in this case because y is in two places and you can't really isolate y, but that doesn't matter because the, the thing isn't written originally as a function of y. It's written implicitly here as a relationship between the two. It's not an explicit relationship. It doesn't say this is clearly this, what you, uh, how you get it from X. It's implied that these are related to each other, right? Because they're in an equation together. It's not an explicit relationship. Nobody has declared why I am related to you this way, <laughs> right? They're kind of keeping it a secret, but it's implied, right? I, I'm, I don't know. Moving right along. I'm, I, I'm implying a way for us to get off task, but, you know. Anyways, if you want to check that these are, uh, that this is correct here, wherever I put my little applet I made for you, as long as we have enough time to do all the yes, you really want to open it. Yes, it's a security risk. Are you sure that you want to open what you just said you wanted to open? It's just saying, do you want to open something? Yeah, like I made it. It's on my computer. I'm pretty sure it's not a security risk. Here's the other thing that you wouldn't have even done in grade 12 is you, you, when we used to do conics in grade 12, you did, you looked at graphs of circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, and sideways parabolas. You didn't do things that had an xy term in them. Basically, if you throw in, without this xy term, that would be a circle. With the xy term, it's actually a, a tilted ellipse like that. If if you want it, you can make it an ellipse that wasn't tilted. If it said like x squared plus 2y squared, if you expanded it one way or the other. But that's what this is. Not to turn this into a whole conics 
lesson here right now. It is 10 minutes. So what was the, just uh, don't panic again. Look at it there. What's the slope? 0.8. If you put all your numbers in and calculated it, you would get 0.8.